sponsored by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Things First. On a Wednesday morning, Jenna Wolf, Nick Wright, Kevin Wilds, and Greg Jennings is with us. So yesterday, Nick picked his all-NBA teams, right? And he did it with the vote that he currently doesn't have from the league, but we'll discuss that another time. The dust has settled. Did he get it right? We will let you know. Have to throw that in there. What would no NFL preseason look like for Cam Newton or Tua or even, say, Tom Brady? We'll discuss. And do the Lakers have enough talent around LeBron James to win a title this season down in Orlando? Antoine Walker will join us to discuss that, but we start this morning down in Tampa with the new look, new feel, newly infused offense of the Buccaneers. Loaded with talent, there's Brady, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski, and fourth-year tight end O.J. Howard, who is very bullish on what Brady and that offense can do. He said, one thing about Tom, I watched him for years in New England. He's always in the game. I think that's something he can bring to our team. No matter what the score is or how it starts in the first half, I think you always have a chance to win when it comes down to the final minutes of the game. He'll keep it close, so only time will tell how good we are. But I think when you put us on paper, we're one of the best in the league, if not the best. Strong words there from O.J. Howard. Our friends over at Fox Bet have the Buccaneers, guys. Their win total over under at nine and a half games this season. So, Nick, with that in mind, is it more likely the Bucs overachieve or underachieve this season? Well, life's all about setting expectations, Jenna. And with O.J. Howard talking about they could be one of, if not the best team in the league, with our friend at Fox Bet saying either they're over under for wins is at nine and a half. To me, unfortunately for Tom Brady fans and for Bucks fans, it's far more likely they underachieve and fall short of that than overachieve because what, what would overachieve mean? Win the division? When you're in the same division as the Saints, win, the, win a couple playoff games, get at least to the conference championship game, a place that has been in the AFC, essentially Tom Brady's birthright to at least appear in since he came in the league. I just, I don't see it for Tampa. Now, what Tampa does have going for them is, while I don't know that Brady's going to win all the close games late the way O.J. Howard talks about, Greg, he's not going to kill you the way Jameis Winston did. Uh, The great Warren Sharp was talking about the importance of scoring on defense on Twitter yesterday. And he put out a video of 25 defensive scores from last season. And I watched it. It was unrelated to this, obviously. But what I saw in that video was Jameis Winston all over the place. There's seven different games. All of a sudden, people are taking Jameis Winston passes and scoring for their team. Brady's not going to have two pick sixes, much less the impossible seven pick sixes and 30 interceptions Jameis had. So that will help the team immediately. So I'm not discounting that. Even at age 43, Greg, Tom Brady's not going to be a turnover machine. But I think the expectations for the Bucs have been ratcheted up high enough that overachieving would mean, at a minimum, a conference title appearance. And in the stacked NFC, I just don't see that as a realistic possibility for them, Greg. I I disagree. I don't see how they underachieve. I I, I definitely see them overachieving. And when you look at history of, of teams who have rosters that are set up and they insert a quarterback, they have success, whether it's uh, topping their record uh, the previous year by one or two years. You look at the Minnesota Vikings when Brett Favre did it. They were 10-6 and six, uh, the year before mm-hmm. he came, and then they end up going 12-4 and four and losing in the conference championship game his first season under center with the Vikings. And then you look at Peyton Manning and the Denver Broncos. They were 8-8. Eight and eight. They lost in the division uh, the uh, while the division round in the playoffs, and then thirteen and three tied for the best overall record in all of football, and they lose in the division round again. Did they overachieve? Yeah. Did they meet their standards? No. But I look at the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, seven and nine team. They finished uh, sec or third in their division, second or third in their division. It's not about winning their division, winning even the conference. 
it's being better than last year. And I think that they will definitely be better than last year. Now, in-house, they feel like they can win this whole thing. And I think there's a lot of us that see them on paper that understand what a quarterback who what you just mentioned, who will not turn the ball over, does for your team overall but specifically defensively he will make them a better team defensively which is where they were stinking Hmm. last year offensively even though Jameis Winston turned the ball over a lot they were top five in offense so they were able to put the ball in the end zone and keep the ball moving moving the chains I like this team I think they overachieved Hmm. well first of all Greg Fantastic shirt. That's sort of distracted from your entire point. The shirt is so good. <laughs> uh, but all I look on paper, OJ Howard is right. They've got a great wide receiving duo and they got a great tight end duo. And the question is, will the duo of quarterbacks that they used to have and they currently have actually fit the bill? So look, most reception yards by duo: Godwin and Evans, two forty ninety. Michael Thomas, Jared Cook, and Amari Cooper and Gallup. Look, there's Bucks are the best. And then we look at the tight ends. Oh, OJ Howard best yards and then old Gronkowski even though he took a year off now here's the question Nick I don't know if this is going to work with old Tom Brady do we assume that Tom Brady is going to round all the edges of the Bucks offense Jameis got sacked a lot more Brady meanwhile was throwing the ball away scrambles Jameis out there trying to make stuff happen Brady is not going to do it again he's going to throw it away and interceptions Winston at 30 and Brady at eight so Nick the question is I know the, I'm going to say national media likes to lay all of this blame on Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston couldn't, couldn't even see. Mm-hmm. So, but I right. believe some of this, the problem here is Bruce Arians' offense. And I don't know if Tom Brady is going to sit in the pocket and, and, and be willing to take those hits and if this offense is going to work at all. Well, I think that you're going to have to... I've never believed that a coach or an offensive system should just be the system irrespective of who the quarterback is. And so Mm -hmm. we talk about this a lot with New England and their transition. What system they were running for Tom, they should run a different one for whether it's Cam or whether it's Stidham because they're not Tom Brady. And a similar scenario should happen when you are starting the oldest quarterback going into a season since Vinny Testaverde that we've seen in the NFL. Like, you you can't ask Tom Brady to take five and seven step drops and to take a bunch of punishment. But I'm going to throw something back to you, Wilds. I'm going to describe a player, and you tell me if you can think of who this player is. The 2017 season ended in a heartbreaking playoff loss where the quarterback threw for a bunch of yards, but the team lost anyway. 2018, the player, the quarterback started the year off playing great, then showed a marked decline as the year went on, certainly at the end of the year. And in 2019, that quarterback was seemingly unrecognizable to any previous year of his career. Who did I just describe? I don't know. Well, the problem is, I could have described Tom Brady, or I could have been describing yeah, that's what Cam I you were Newton. Trying to make me say, oh, okay. And, well, it's Tom Brady or Cam, and it's a bit of a Rorschach test for how you view sports because both guys, 2017, Cam loses in the playoffs, throws for 352 touchdowns in New Orleans, they lose anyway. Brady throws for 500 in the Super Bowl, they lose, not their fault. 2018, Cam starts great, falls off at the end of the year. 2018, Brady starts great, does not play well at the end of the year. They do win the Super Bowl, but that they scored the, their defense allowed three points in that Super Bowl. Brady threw two, tried to throw three picks in the AFC Championship sure. game. 2019, right. uh, Brady looked nothing like he'd ever looked before. I am more bullish on Cam because, to me, it's very recognizable why Cam was di- bad. He got hurt. Other people are more bullish on Brady because they blame the weapons. I think with Brady, it's recognizable why he was different. He's 43 years old. He's on an obvious, clear decline that is not going to fix due to age, Jenna. And so it is there. If you believe that Tom Brady is just going to continue to be ageless, then you should say the Bucs are going to overachieve. But if you believe he has shown the signs of age and decline and that there's not going to be a shot in the arm by changing situations, then I don't know how you can think they're going to do anything other than underachieve, Jenna. 
Well, that's the question. You wonder if the only way that this Tampa Bay offense is going to get off the ground and overachieve is if they change the whole thing and make it revolve around what Tom Brady can do, and then you wonder what he can do. And by the way, if you look league-wide, Fox Bet has just four teams with a higher win total than the Bucks right now.